Larry David once said, quote, anyone can be confident with a full head of hair, but a confident bald man? There's your diamond in the rough. Totally inadequate, completely insecure, paranoid, neurotic. It's a pleasure. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In this installment, we're counting down our picks for the top five most compelling facts about balding. You're bald! <laughs> no, I'm not. I was bald. <laughs> well, hey. Number five. Hair restoration surgery works, but it will cost you. Chinese have done it, my friend. The Chinese have done it. Done what? Discovered the cure for baldness. Some among us prefer not to take thinning hair in stride with the grace of Larry David. Yeah, a lot of sunscreen, right? <laughs> exactly. I know, you can't go outside without the sunscreen. <laughs> maybe we're vain or just afraid of getting older. Or maybe they have a movie career and endorsement contracts to maintain. Oh, I can just taste those meaty leading man parts in my mouth. That latter reason might be why celebrities such as Matthew McConaughey, Bradley Cooper, and Tom Brady have reportedly undergone hair restoration surgery. And if you ask us, we think they look great. We also have our strong suspicions that Michael Scott had work done after season one of The Office. I think that pretty much sums it up. The surgery involves removing follicles from the back of a person's head and planting them on affected areas of their scalp. If you have an extra four to $15,000 lying around, feel free to join the more than 390,000 people worldwide who took part in the surgery in 2014. Interesting. Number four. Hair restoration products may result in failed drug tests. Balding is a touchy subject, and those who use hair restoration products more than likely prefer to keep their efforts away from the public eye. Nonetheless, there have been multiple cases of just the opposite taking place, with athletes failing drug tests due to finasteride, a pharmaceutical sold as Proscar and Propecia to prevent baldness. The World Anti-Doping Agency decided that the drug could be used to mask steroids and banned it from 2005 to 2009. Zach Lund lost his spot on the 2006 Olympic skeleton team when he tested positive for finasteride just days before he was supposed to compete. Lucky for him, he got to go to the 2010 Olympics, and lucky for balding athletes everywhere, the most popular hair loss drug, Rogaine, will never cost you a gold medal. I think I see something here, George. <laughs> Let's go to the videotape! Oh, crap. <laughs> Number 3. Balding is a huge source of stress, and not just for men. Whoa. Oh, Jesus. In a poll commissioned by Benenden Health in the UK, male pattern baldness ranked as the number three image concern for men. You're bald. So are you. I'll kill you, you s Come here! Well, it was tied for third with man boobs. Cause that's my side boob. But hair loss isn't just a guy thing. And when it happens, women might just have it worse. She's bald! She's bald! Research from 2014 found that 21 million women had experienced hair loss in the US that year, and 80% of women would have noticeable hair loss by age 60. I wore a wig immediately after I shaved my hair off. That seemed like the natural progression. Your appearance has an impact on your life, particularly for women. 40% of women with hair loss said that it caused problems in their marriage, while 63% report that it affects their career. The prospect of facing those difficulties is so daunting, one survey found that 24% of women equated losing their hair with losing a limb. <laughs> Number two, bald men are seen to be more masculine. You're under arrest. Arrest? I don't feel like I'm under arrest. Okay, for every Dwayne Johnson, there's bound to be a George Costanza or two. But the hairless among us happen to be seen as more masculine than their full-headed counterparts. While we couldn't find any research that said bald men are actually more virile, a study published in the journal Social Psychology and Personal Science found that men with shaven heads were seen as more dominant and masculine. Give us the girl, and I'll let you live. What are you going to do? You might want to put on your helmet for this one. Did the recent onslaught of bald badasses in Hollywood have anything to do with this? Perhaps going against the societal norm and taking it all off has a perverse appeal? That's harsh. A full head of hair may often be considered more attractive, but it's nice to hear that balding can have its upsides. And this, so this is your hair? This is your normal hair? My hair, hair. My hair uh, it's, it's normal. Yeah, it is normal. Number one, genetics is the main cause of hair loss, but not in the way you'd think. It's in your blood. That's racist. Your soul. That's racist. Your eyes. That's gay. That's homophobic. That's black. That's racist. Damn. If you want to discover whether or not balding is in your future, check out your maternal grandfather. If he has a full head of hair, you're in the clear. At least that's what the old wives tale says. 
genetics is the number one factor in balding. And those baldness genes come from the X chromosome, so your mom's side is a major factor. But research has shown that men whose fathers are bald have a higher likelihood of developing baldness themselves. Ultimately, genes, hormones, and age create a cocktail of factors that decide when and to what extent each and every one of us will be affected. So don't go placing all the blame on one grandpa. But hey, either way, don't sweat it. If you ask us, there is one old adage that still holds up. It's what's on the inside that counts. Hey, we're all the same on the inside. Stinky and pink. So, would you sooner lose a limb than your hair? Hello, can anyone see me? And more importantly, do you think Jason Statham or Vin Diesel pull off the shaved head look better? Now why would you believe anything I would tell you? For more restorative top 10s and transplanted top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I don't like